In the month of Berber, this is the second month of the Coptic year, and the whole month is devoted, the church is devoting the whole month of Berber for us to realize and understand the authority of God, the unlimited power of God, the infinite authority of God. So we see that on the four Sundays of the month, there are materials, readings, for us to understand and start to understand more and more and scratch the surface on how we should come to God. And it's the second month of the year, because the first month was about repentance and the new year and coming back to God. And, and then the second month is about the revival and no revival without understanding the authority of God. A lot of our weaknesses, spiritual deadness, our prayer is weak, our um, spiritual life is, is, is kind of stagnant because of this sickness, not understanding the unlimited power of God and the infinite authority that He has. So on the first Sunday, for example, we saw the Jesus is healing, is, is authority over sickness. Second Sunday was the fish, the catching of the fish. And he is authority over the nature. This Sunday is his authority over Satan and demons. And next Sunday will be over death. He is, is, is raising a dead uh, man. Jesus wanted to make sure, and, and the, the, in the church materials you'll see that there is one line repeated in all four Gospels. And, for example, today you'll see that it says, all the multitude... All the multitude were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? All the multitude were amazed. On the first Sunday, very similar line. It says all after the, uh, uh, the, 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 the paralytic man took up his bed and, and he left in front of them. He said all were amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. That was the first Sunday. Same, almost same line. On the second gospel, it says, uh, all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish. They were astonished at the catch of the fish. And then on the fourth gospel of, of uh, Baba, it says, then fear came upon them, and they glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited, visited his people. So, Jesus and the church wanted us to not just realize the authority of God, but to be astonished with it, to be amazed by the authority of God. And why Jesus did all these miracles? He made a point. We know that St. John and all the disciples say, we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. God is so glorious, so powerful. He has authority over, over nature, over the body, over Satan, huh? over even dead, death and dead man was risen. So the question for us today, am I amazed by the unlimited power of God 
Am I astonished and glorifying God for His unlimited power, our infinite authority? When when they, they came to Jesus, and you will see some of the, uh, the readings, the materials that the church has put together for us. They were astonished. They were amazed. But at the same time, they were caught by, they will say, for example, today, they will say, you know, this fellow... This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. Hmm? And on the first gospel, again, the same pattern, amazed and everything. But at the same time, they say, why does this man speak blasphemies like this when he said, uh, your sins are forgiven? So, we look at the, uh, the Psalms, the Psalms of the readings, and we see another aspect of this authority of God. And we see how we react, amazed, amazed, astonished, glorifying God, and praising Him. That's the response. So, in the liturgy, Psalm, we see, we, we read, You are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. You, have, you are my strong refuge. So God wants us to understand and realize His unlimited power so we can come to him. Why? Why he would under, want us to understand his authority? So we can come to him with trust, with faith, to rely on him, to come and be bold in our prayers. When, when Jesus went to some towns and he looked at them and said, they will not understand my authority. He did not make any miracles. It would not, you know, they would not have faith in me. I'm not going to work with this village or with these people. So, he makes those miracles so we can trust in his power and his authority. And if you look at all the rest of the Psalms, you, you will find the praise. This is how to be astonished. This is how to be amazed at God's glory. In the Matins, he says, Awake my glory, awake lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. In the Vesper Psalm, he says, For you are my hope. You are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. I have become as a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. You are my strong refuge. So again, how are we amazed with the unlimited power of God? Is it reflected in our prayer? in our life, in our expectations of God, or our life, spiritual life is stagnant and we think God cannot make it. You know, there is that Roman leader who came once to Jesus and said, I understand authority. And I know if you say a word, my servant will be healed. Just say a word. He said, I understand authority, and you have authority. 
Do we think God has authority or not? Unlimited authority. Unlimited power. Infinite power or not? How do we pray? How do we pray? We pray for small things. We pray for pity stuff. Or we say, God, you are capable. You have unlimited power. You are my strong refuge. Are we anxious? Are we uh, that weak while we have our father with unlimited power? And we see that Jesus was focused throughout his ministry for his disciples to understand his authority. It's very foundational in our spiritual life when we come to to God every day in prayer. The church put for us some very important words so it can help us understand and enter into the glory of God. We, we, We say... Uh, the word Pantocrator a lot. Pantocrator, the Almighty. He is Almighty. He has authority. And we, in the, in the prayer of thanksgiving, we say, you've given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. So, The first thing we need to learn about God's authority is that it is astonishing. It's amazing. It's unlimited. It's infinite. The second thing we need to learn about the authority of God that it is to be shared with us. It is a personal relationship. It is not something that God is all-powerful, but He doesn't care about us. He's powerful and He cares. His authority was not on the first gospel of, of this month. He told us that He's not just has power over sickness. He has power over forgiveness of sins. He has the authority to to forgive sins. It was easy for him to say to the guy, walk up and pick up your bed and, 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 and walk. But he wanted to lift the understanding of authority. I can do this easily, but I can also forgive sins. Have we experienced the personal authority of God that He forgave our sins? Many times Satan will just convince us that we are doomed. But God will say, I have the authority to forgive your sins. Unlimited forgiveness. Infinite forgiveness. The second gospel of the month was talking about not just power or authority over nature, ordering the fish to go into the net, but he has the authority over the resources, their paycheck, the purpose in life. He has authority to put purpose in our life. When Peter obeyed him. At the end, he said, they forsake everything and followed him. And he told him, no, do not fear. You'll not be catching fish anymore. You're going to be catching men, fisher of men. Has the authority on nature, so we can follow him. And he has authority of our income. He has authority over our purpose in life. Today, he has authority not just on Satan, on demons, but over the vision 
of that man to bring his undivided kingdom to our earth, to our heart, to become his flesh and bone on earth. So the demon-possessed man start to see, start to speak, praise. A Christian who is living without understanding the authority of God, not, not living under the authority of God, is a dead Christian. The church who does not see the authority of God, the glory of God every day, it's a dead church. We come to church not to stand up and, 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 and leave after that. We come to see the authority of God, the glory of God, the unlimited power of God, and to not become blind. Not to become mute, but to have our eyes opened so we can see His power. We can praise Him. To tell Him, you are my trust, my strong refuge. The third thing we learn about the authority of God, that it is hidden. I need to be revealed. Hidden, hidden to the wise and the prudent. And revealed to the child, to the babes. The authority of God, you're not going to find it or realize it or understand it in intellectual debates. Or in Facebook debates. Or the noise of uh, some conversation or sermons. You're not going to understand it through some readings. The only way to understand it is in behind closed doors, on our knees, so God can reveal it for us. By obeying Him, trusting Him, and sitting with Him and say, Lord, enough of this stagnant life. We want to live under your authority, unlimited power. We sit with him face to face so he can reveal it. It is not acquired by knowledge. It's only revealed by him one on one. So the authority of God, the unlimited power of God is amazing, astonishing. Everything about God is glorious. His voice is glorious. His presence is glorious. His word is glorious. His commandments are glorious. Everything about God is glorious. He's amazing. He's astonishing. He walked on water. He healed the sick. He forgave sins. And he wanted to astonish us. He was, he was making sure that we got astonished and amazed. And all his power is to be shared. It's personal for us, for our good. May God give us to live under his authority, unlimited power. And to have the quiet time with him to reveal his authority to us, to him his glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.